Today on the show, we get the gang back together, we kick the hornet's nest, and we make the ultimate sacrifice in the name of victory. Welcome back to Lore Party's special coverage of the Halo television series. On this limited run of the Lore Party podcast, we'll be providing in-depth recaps of each episode of the new Paramount Plus series based on the timeless sci-fi shooter franchise. My name's Connor. My name's Kevin. And I'm your resident crabby man, Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is you only have to be crabby one more time uh, because we're at the uh, finish line. This is episode nine. We are, we are at the end. Yeah, this is episode nine, Transcendence, the season one finale of Halo on Paramount+. Plus. What a ride it's been. I think it's been okay. I don't, I don't hate it. Honestly, though, yeah, looking back on season one, we'll, we'll probably do a more in-depth uh, season one full recap later, but uh, just having watched the finale... You know, I, f- I feel pretty good about it. I think it ended on a really good note. I think it brought home a lot of uh, important character arcs that had been you know developed over time, and just just some amazing spectacle and action. Just you know, I was very happy with this finale. I think it think it ended the season on a on a high note for sure. I think people are going to say you know there's a lot of negative things that were said on the internet and by some people on this podcast <laughs> me about the first episode. And so the question you always have to ask is, did the show end? better than where it started and i would have to say that yes it did end Mm. better than where it started now how much did it improve that remains to be said yeah let's we'll talk about that later let's just take a second to appreciate Jaden admitting or or kind of conceding no no just giving the praise that the halo show got better over time like not maybe i didn't say good i didn't say great i said it got better it improved (laughs) you're you're that teacher giving a sticker to uh to the kid in class who showed the most improvement (laughs) yes no i'm glad to hear that you know i think um you know we've all had We've all had different perspectives on this on this uh, show as we've talked about each episode this season, and you know I look forward to uh, doing that again season two. I know Jaden, you're not looking forward to it, but <laughs> oh I, god, there's another one. <laughs> I am optimistic for more. Uh, this this finale did leave me wanting more, and uh, yeah, I was yeah pretty happy with uh, yeah. the season arc as as whole, but. But, and, and please, if you there listening at home think that you'd like to hear a season two recap from us, please let us know on Twitter or at our Lore Party email. That's right. On Twitter, at Lore underscore Party, you can get at us. Let us know what you thought of our of our takes, of our recaps of each episode. You know, I our... welcome your hatred. Please oh, give it to me. It fuels me. That too, yeah. And uh, let us know what you thought. Like, what, what did you think of Halo on Paramount Plus? Did you like it, hate it, somewhere in between? I just want you guys to tell us how much you liked it, because I had fun. I just want to know if people had fun, because I'm letting yeah, you exactly. guys banter a little bit, but I really want to know, like, who had fun? I just, I just, I think that is the, the whole thing about this is do what, did I have fun playing the games? Absolutely. Did I have fun, uh, watching this? Yeah. So I want to know who's having fun. It's a good way to put it. I had fun talking to you gentlemen about this Aww. show. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Email us at lorepartypodcast at gmail.com as well. And with that all said, let's get into the recap of episode nine transcendence. But first. We're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors, but we'll be right back. Okay, uh, let's get down to brass tacks here and uh, do a beat-by-beat replay of Episode 9, Transcendence, the Halo. It's nine episodes. You know the drill. (laughs) You know how it goes. That's right. So, yeah, the season finale here, we uh, kind of start with uh, In the Aftermath of McKee's activation of the artifact at the end of the previous episode. You know, it's, you know, shit's all messed up, you know, rubble falling everywhere, everything's dark and uh, kind of crumbling, and John can be seen struggling to get to his feet, and he, he finds the, the base around him on Reach has been just devastated by the shockwave released by the artifact. He uh, kind of stumbles around looking for his teammates and he, you know, confirms that Kaya survived at least. She, you know, kind of waves him off like, I'm okay, go, go. And so once he realizes she's all right, he starts pursuing McKee. Like she's trying to get away with the artifact and he doesn't want that to happen. Uh, We see her actually 
grab a gun off a Marine, shoot a guy with it, and then kind of force a guard at gunpoint to uh, escort her to the captured Covenant Phantom. So she uh, she kind of knows where to go, how to make her break, and uh, you know, she's she's moving with a purpose. The keys were still in the ignition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought it was really cool that she just picked up a gun and was like, boom, got somebody. Already. Like, I don't know if she knows yeah. how to use guns or has seen it or anything, but it was pretty cool to just yeah. see them just grab it and just be like, bam, take me. I right want to be a real human last episode, new episode. Fuck that shit. <laughs> it's my murder. Yeah. she yeah. covered it all the way. Not, she's not hesitating anymore. Uh, you know, no. after what, uh, after whatever, what's been done to her, uh, all humans are uh, kind of on the shopping block for her. Meanwhile, on his way back to the hangar, John runs into Riz and Vanek, who have Kai at gunpoint, mm. and they are still trying to bring John in alive. They don't really know what the situation is. Yeah. And John decides, he's like, you know what, I don't have time for this. Halsey has brainwashed us. Mm. He just lays it all on the frickin' table. He's like, no, you guys gotta understand we were kidnapped as children, all this stuff. And they don't believe him. Yeah. They're like, no, there's no way. There's no way they would do that. And then Captain Keys walks in and is like, yes. He's right. 100% can confirm. He literally just drops a can confirm on them. <laughs> What's crazy, too, is that Vanek is pissed. Like, actually showing yeah. emotion, yeah. which is really, whoa. Yeah. Overloaded his, his little uh, suppression chip there. Yeah. The pellets, uh, stop wor- uh, pellets aren't enough to uh, keep them from caring. <laughs> they, 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 their concern for finding this out overloads their, uh, their implants and uh, Riz yep. and Vanek are, they seem to, they, they start buying it once Keys confirms. Absolutely. And the other spicy thing that was there is that Miranda also heard Captain yep. Keys confessed all this. And she had this horrible look on her face, which honestly, I don't know why she's surprised because in the first episode, he's like, hey, honey, child murder is definitely okay. And now she's like, I can't believe my child murdering father kidnapped them as children. It's like, no, you should have seen this coming by now. You're, you're both your parents are kind of assholes. It takes us back to the episode we did a couple days ago where we talked about when Miranda was in the room and you kind of see that Miranda has this weird inclining that she's angry at Halsey and then also kind of looks at her dad and is kind of like disappointed almost, but doesn't necessarily confirm it. I think it was like episode eight or no, not episode. Was it episode eight? Uh, maybe episode six. And it was when six, they were yeah. in the room with the lawyer and then John said, yeah. get out. That reminded me yeah. of that kind of like, I think solidified it. You could see it in, in her head like, oh, I, you are a piece of shit. I think since then she had been kind of unwilling to She'd been unwilling to face the possibility that yeah. her father was just as corrupt and guilty as her mother was. But, I think uh, kind of wishful thinking on her part almost. But you can see it on her face this time especially. Yeah, now, now, it's, yep. now it's decided. She has, she has overwhelming evidence that no, her father is just as, cor- as immoral as her mother is. Uh, or just, you know, she can't really look up to either of them or trust either of them. So uh, when this revelation is you know, complete, uh, they're like, all right, so now our new mission is to we got to go grab Halsey and make sure she doesn't escape. Yeah. Well, uh, that's actually Kai's mission. The other two, the other three are like, we got to get the ring. And Kai's like, nah, fuck that. I want Halsey's fucking skull. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kai calls. So dibs. she breaks off and just starts chasing after her. Well, there's some like, okay, we're going to go save humanity. <laughs> and if you don't mind. And then brings us to one of the coolest sequences, I think, in the episode. I thought this was fucking cool. Kai MVP of the whole show personally, but I will I'm a Kai stan, I'll just say it. So Absolutely. it cuts to Maki making off with the Phantom and John and them just not making it. And then Aiden and Halsey prepare to take off and leave Reach, despite, you know, a company of Marines just preparing to arrest them both and kind of shoot mm-hmm. them. And Aiden kind of mentions the package being secured on the ship. However, Halsey's like, did you get a reading? And Aiden's like, what? And Halsey's <laughs> like, did you get a reading? Somebody activated it. And he's like, bitch, no. What the fuck? What are you nuts? And the, the uh, of course, he also mentions like, okay, everything just went down with an uh, EMP. So like, no, what the hell? And it kind of shows like Halsey's mindset is like one track mind, like does not give a fuck oh, about course. anything. Big time. And so then Aiden mentions the package being secured on the ship, kind of gives them some options. And Halsey is like, okay, fine, we'll take off. Because Aiden's like, you're going to get arrested. Like, you have, we have to leave now. So as they're about to take off, Kai sees the ship taking off and just goes like, hell no, I'm just going to run my ass off. And she 
runs. It's this really cool pan of Kai running across the tarmac toward Mm -hmm. Halsey's ship and jumps onto the hull and then just starts shooting one of the engines in the back instantly and just goes ham and the ship all of a sudden, you know, just starts kind of falling and she breaks into the hull and as Mm -hmm. soon as Halsey and Aiden see this, they try to shut the, like, doors for the bridge and Kai grabs the doors open and kind of rips them apart and is like, fuck you, I am not doing this and gets in the room, in, in the bridge, and demands that Halsey tell her what her real name is. And is like, what's my yeah. real name? Of course, who am I? Kai oh. makes the one mistake and takes her helmet off. I, that yeah. is the one mistake all the time. Like, why? S- why? Stop it. <laughs> Probably to show her emotional state to Halsey. Sure. Yeah, I too. I feel but like they that have way. the helmet cam shot. They've established it. Just use that shot. Yeah, I don't. <sighs> Please. Halsey can't see that, though. So, like. That's, yeah, well, yeah, I guess. She wants her to see it. I guess. Yeah, that's kind of my interpretation yeah. of what, like, how I thought about it. Um, but of course, because she took her helmet off, Aiden smacks her in the head. Not that it does much good. Yeah, she like I don't, <laughs> I don't understand this. Like, you think you're gonna like? You have a Spartan here who takes out complete armies by themselves, and you're uh, just gonna, you're just gonna smack them in the head there, and that's gonna do it. Like what? So of course, or whatever. Yeah. So of course, Kai just turns around with this like <laughs> menacing face just looks super pissed and picks Aiden up and just throws him up into the light fixture and kills him instantly and then kind of looks at him and is like oh shit what have I done oops (laughs) (laughs) and so then Halsey takes that as a distraction and jumps into the escape pod leaving Kai behind on the ship as everybody's running out being like you know where are you where are you like what's going on Kai one thing that was really cool that I noticed was when the ship was falling, Kai was, like, trying to figure out, like, what to do. And they, they're they calling her by her number. Keys is calling her by her Spartan assigned number. And you just, you don't hear anything. Uh, the ship crashes, crashes in front of everybody. And then when Keys calls her name Kai, she comes out of the wreckage and is a complete badass. And uh, John, we, then we go to a, a close-up of John. And he's like, Cortana, I'm going to need you now. And it's kind of mm. like, ah, it's all coming together. And it's, it's, it's a nice uh, ending sequence. Yeah. Yeah, Silver Team is officially reunited at this point. Riz and Vanek have, you know, kind of rejoined the fold. Kai turns out to be okay. And John is now working closely with Miranda and Cortana to try to determine where McKee could have taken the artifact. And they, you know... Obviously, in the last episode, the Asparo system just didn't pan out. They just, you know, that lead seemed like a dead end, but they take a second look at it and they realize, you know, due to some clues left behind by McKee, that there's a kind of an innate gravitational anomaly to the Asparo system that causes entire planets to be masked from external sensors. Like they just appear as glimmers of light they don't seem like planets so that's why the previous attempts to scan the system were just inconclusive so they they kind of get it they 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 realize no there's a planet there this planet that McKee mentioned called Roskotska it has to be there we just can't see it until we're actually there so Perengoski is there and she's like all right well let's mount up then I'll you know launch an entire full-scale marine assault on this place to get the artifact back but I did like that line when chief just goes Ma'am, you can send 10,000 Marines. Well, you'll get us 10,000 dead Marines. I was like, oh, shit. Exactly, yeah. And don't forget that in the beginning, Perengoski accuses John of being blind to McKee and what they did to him, basically, and says, oh, you shouldn't trust them. I think that they wanted, the, the whole plan was to want to get this, to get this artifact. And Cortana starts to kind of chime in and say, well, wait a minute, no, no, no. And then they, John cuts her off and is like, no, let's find this place. Like, It's a very interesting dynamic between everybody. Like, when we said rank doesn't matter, it kind of felt like rank was not a thing. Yeah, they they, they kind of threw that away a little bit, I think, which I was like, eh. Yeah, that part was was really cool. Like, just the the cold, like, you know, this is not a job for an army of Marines. This is a job for us. Just send the Spartans. He says, you know, we can do it, ma'am. Silver team can do it. And that was like, that was... That was chills down the spine for me because it was like he's he's back in that leadership position, like the team's ready to go, and that's that's like what a Spartan does. Like he kind of steps up and says, 
you know, don't waste, don't just throw bodies at this problem. Throw, like, don't use a sledgehammer, use a scalpel. Use mm-hmm. us. And so, I like that. A scalpel made of sledgehammers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, a yeah. scalpel hammer, if you will. I like that part a lot. But, uh, yeah, Parangoski does kind of leave John with some parting advice. You know, she she, she does give him the, the green light, like, okay, I will send you, but you gotta remember that you know, the, the turmoil you've been going through recently, that's not going to serve you in combat. You have to set that aside. You know, she says, when you walk onto the battlefield, John must no longer exist. Only the Master Chief. Which... Ominous. Foreshadowing. It was really cool. That's very heavy foreshadowing for later, but at, in the moment, it's really just... I was just saying, I was like, you gotta, you gotta turn off and be a killing machine. You gotta, like, you know, be the... You know, be the Spartan one 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 seven we used to know, and uh, you know, get the, get this done. None so. of the bullshit matters. Just there's a job to do. Just do the damn job. Exactly. Absolutely. So as the team's getting ready to gear up and you know go on the mission, com- uh, Captain Keys uh, approaches John and he's like, "Hey, by the way, Halsey should be captured soon. Her her escape craft did not get that far." Mm-hmm. And you know, John doesn't really seem. He's like, "All right, you nope. know, sure, <laughs> that's fine." And Keys almost like. It's almost like he's upset because John's like turning back into the normal chief. So he's like, he wanted to, he, he stops and let, let, lets him know like, hey, I'm sorry about my part in ruining your life. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm sorry that I, you know, that all these secrets that I've kept and all the crimes that I committed for Halsey. And John's basically just like, hey man, I get it. You know, sometimes crazy ladies can do that to you. <laughs> no, he says, uh, there's no apology that can give back uh, what we took for you, and John tells him that a reckoning is coming for all of us, but not today. Which wow. I like that. Yeah, I like that because he was like, "Hey, we're like, you know, because John's John's committed some sins too over the last couple of oh yeah, I don't know how it was like weeks that this the show yeah. goes on over. No one has clean hands here, and John. Yeah, John everybody's everybody's a little dirty. Yeah, just only a couple of them have committed child kidnapping and <laughs> fake murder. So you know. Yeah, and right uh, that, now this did lead up to my favorite <laughs> part of the show, which I was like, finally we're getting some chemistry among the Spartans. They're walking, uh, Ka- uh, Kai, Riz, and Vanek are like going in the ship, and Kai's just like, I can't believe you guys were gonna shoot me, <laughs> and they were like, absolutely, we were, hundred percent, without hesitation. She's like, <laughs> like, they're, she's like, how? That's so cold. And like, weren't you gonna shoot us? And she's like, yeah, but I would have felt bad about it. <laughs> And I was that like, was ah, good. that's nice. That's fun. There yeah. we go. They're having some fun here. Yeah, I, I like that. I thought that was really fun. And so then this leads to Halsey running around in the woods, kind of, uh, near her crashed escape pod. We can see several teams of UNSC Marines who are kind of getting coverage on her and bringing her into an interrogation cell. So basically they catch her and then they bring her into an interrogation cell, cut to keys trying to talk with Miranda, but she kind of just ignores him, and then she enters the cell to speak with her mother. Yeah, it's uh, it's very tense. Like, you know, Keyes knows, like, this is a very turbulent time for his daughter, and he tries to, like, reach out to her, but yeah, Miranda, she takes after her mother in this way. She has a very one-track mind right now, and also, yeah, she's just not on speaking terms with, uh, with her father. It's pretty cold. It's, like, really it cold. It is, yeah. And while that's happening, uh, we see McKee kind of arriving on Roskotska, the uh, planet that she had mentioned to John earlier, and she delivers the keystone to her prophet masters. You know, we, we, we see mercy again, and we, uh, we see regret again, and, you know, there's, like, the, the hierarchs are uh, on location to mark the occasion of the keystones being returned. And, of course... Regret being the sniveling worm he is. That's that's kind of cool. He's still like the the snide one of the three from the games. That's kind of how it was to there too. And he he points out that uh oh hey well uh, wasn't McKee supposed to also deliver the head of the demon? You know she kind of failed it's on like that. You, hey, you got an A, but what about the A plus you could have gotten? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you missed out on the extra credit. But but Mercy, you know he he's pleased with McKee's results uh, nonetheless, and he kind of proclaims that. The great journey is nigh. You know, McKee sort of politely and uh, meekly asks, well, there's a place for me on the great journey too, right? And and Mercy uh, reassures her, like, oh, of course, oh, of course there's a place on the great journey for the blessed one. So he kind of pulls her strings and, you know, pats her on the head, 
you know, good good job, my human pet. You've uh, you've retrieved the treasures I sent you to get. So good job. Absolutely. Now, when they're on their way to this planet, Silver Team, Cortana has a chance to like have a moment with John where she kind of reveals something that I thought would be a uh, you know a, a b- bigger news earlier, but I'm glad they revealed it in this episode where she's like, hey. I want you to know that I was originally planned to like completely wipe out your mind and take over your body. Mm. And John, see, John takes that in stride. Yeah. To be fair, John really is like, okay, yep, fair <laughs> enough. Which I was like, that's should have been more of a shock, I guess. Uh, and he, the only thing he really asks her is like, hey, why didn't you do it? You know, when you had the chance. And I kind of like this because it's, it, it took him nine episodes, but we're finally seeing their relationship start to like, truly blossom in yeah. my opinion yeah. where she's like i was designed to learn and i have from you mm-hmm. you know john's humanity is what makes him special yeah. and I, I i really like that part and i just i wish again like we'll get into it at the end but i just feel like the show had so many different threads that it it cost us like a really good one i would have loved to have seen their dynamic grow a little bit more throughout the show mm. Yeah, better late than never, I guess. But if if that could have been, it felt ta- it feels yeah. a little tacked on. I'm gonna yeah. be honest. I, like, I, it's like it's like. By the way, we like each other now. It's like, oh come on, like show me that a little earlier. I understand that, but like the, the I think this was a moment that kind of feels like a season finale moment uh, that they had to build up to. But I I did I did want to see more of that though. I, I I liked this scene, but I was left wanting more. I'm with you there. Absolutely. I also am kind of bummed that we didn't get more of just them talking, like just the two of them. Yeah. yeah. So it was a little bit, it was interesting. Like, yeah, like I would have liked, you know, uh, caring mom Cortana a little bit where it's like, you know, chief sees a dog and it's like, chief, your heart rate's up. What's wrong? It's like the dog. I mean, whatever, shut up. Mm-hmm. Like I would have liked like her, like I would have liked to have seen her learning a little bit more, I think. Yeah. As far as we know, the only learning she did was watching them have sex the last episode. Yeah, right. so. <laughs> so now we cut to the Condor. Soon after this, the Condor it hits like this weird extreme gravitational turbulence. Everything goes black. And Chief's like, what the hell? I can't see anything. There's no stars. There's no nothing. And the whole gravitational turbulence kind of is where the Aspero system is. So Silver Team now has to struggle to keep the ship together while John and Cortana steer them through the turbulent stretch of space. Basically, they are getting stretched like spaghetti. Uh, Cortana <laughs> calls it spaghettified. She starts kind of being, you know, Vanek is like, I don't like this chief. And she's like, oh, it'll be fine. As long as we stay in this, this, we, you know, this path, we won't have a problem. And he's like, what do you mean? What kind of problem? She goes, spaghetti, like, kind of like spaghettification. And he's like, what? <laughs> and like, nobody told me this. And he's like, I don't like this chief. I don't like this. It was, it was really funny. Um, but it was... Really cool. Kind of I, looked like, um, oh, what would, Connor, you said Interstellar, right? Yeah, yeah, you said Interstellar yeah, earlier. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And it looked... It, it, it very much reminds me of uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Like, what what what, are, well, what does it feel like? Uh, it feels like being drunk. Well, that doesn't sound so so bad. Tell that to a glass of water. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was cool. It was really cool to see. And so this you can see the ship kind of stretching a little bit, and there's a fire, and Kai, you know, is running around putting fires out, and... Then you have Cortana. Then you have Cortana disappearing all of a sudden, and everything just keeps getting worse and worse. The ship is shaking. Uh-huh. The hulls begin to buckle. Cortana's systems start just kind of just scramble, and she's not really there anymore. And everybody's holding on to the ship, trying to hold on for dear life. And John just kind of takes this clarity moment, and everything seems lost, and he just kind of closes his eyes and then opens them again and is very calm and he's kind of back to that master chief calmness if you will i think this is when he really went back to getting rid of the worry getting rid of all that stuff and just focuses i couldn't tell if it was cortana holding his hand or not but i thought it was i just interpreted it as him and he's just holding this joystick and all of a sudden he just they pop out of this weird temporal turbulence (laughs) <laughs> and they're in the Asparo system, fully intact. I will say it was a little weird to see stars all over the place because if there was a gravitational issue and light disappears all of a sudden, shouldn't it be encasing the whole thing? I don't know. That's physics. I don't know. But they're there. They finally make it. Yeah. In one piece, luckily. Uh, it got dicey there for a while there. Meanwhile, back on Reach, uh, 
Miranda seems to be really enjoying herself as, you know, she witnesses the unprecedented occasion of, quote, the great Catherine Halsey being held accountable for her actions, finally. Like, Miranda's full-on gloating mode right now, just, like, really rubbing her mother's face in what's about to happen to her. She kind of, like, sits down across from Halsey, uh, you know, reads through, like, some files, and she says, uh, hey, um, so I hear that a military tribunal has already convened, and you've been convicted of just so many crimes, you know, and ranging from, I think she says, starts with kidnapping and ends with treason. There's a lot in the middle. <laughs> and um, she basically sums it up with, uh, they've, they've already decided that the only punishment that suits this case is execution. You're going to be put to death. And again, Miranda's just really just reveling in this almost. Like she seems to just be uh, lording it over uh, her mother right now. And Halsey... This might just be me saying this, but it, it almost seems like she expresses a uh, strange form of pride in Miranda. Like, you know, you've, you've grown a lot, you've matured, you've, uh, you've been hardened by what you've been through, is, is something that, that Halsey says to her. But then, the last thing Halsey says to Miranda, at least in this instance, is uh, you know, that you know, she tells her, you've been chasing a ghost. Let go. Let it go. For your own sake. And uh, to that, Miranda simply responds, goodbye, mother. It's one of the coldest exchanges I've ever seen. It was like, oh, man, you could cut the tension with a knife. And so Miranda is really just, you know, cutting ties, saying goodbye, and letting go of uh, this one-sided relationship she's had with her mother, seemingly for her whole life. So there's a lot of catharsis here going on. And we're not the only witnesses of it. Keyes also turns out to be a witness. Captain Keyes, Miranda's father. He removes the uh, kind of remote spying device that allows him to uh, spy on conversations. And so he he obviously watched this confrontation, and he is just overwhelmed by it. He's he's He just kind of looks very despondent and just, yeah, overwhelmed by, by what's happening between his... Uh, his daughter and her mother. I think it kind of brings back to the conversation he had with Halsey in Halsey's like weird apartment when he said, you're throwing all of your relationships away and for what? Yeah. And this was like that solidification of the one relationship he really wished, he, not even his own, but the one relationship yeah. he wished had been there. Yeah. Why can't everyone I love just get along? I know, right? <laughs> it is really interesting. That, like, even though, yeah, Jacob Keyes doesn't want to really have anything to do with Halsey, but he does want Halsey to be a mother to their kid. So it's like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to treat me any, any type of way you want, but like you should at least have a relationship with your daughter. And that's, that's what makes him upset. I think so. It's, that's interesting. It's more for Miranda rather than Halsey too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You think maybe he feels guilty because he took so many kids from their parents? He just wants this kid to like his her parent that she has? <laughs> That's Oof. probably part of it. Oof. Yeah. Could be. Uh, but we don't have time to dissect that because we got to go back to the planet <laughs> as Maki prepares for the ritual. You know, uh, they, they, they do this little ceremony. This elite picks up uh, the smaller artifact, he, and then he's, he wants uh, to combine the little one with the big one. And uh, after she does that, they're basically like, hey, so uh, we're going we're gonna to toss this thing in the trash once we're done, right? And they're like, oh, absolutely, totally. This <laughs> thing's an abomination. It's unclean. We need to get rid of this thing. You're referring to McKee, right? The Yes, of course. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I, was, I was confused. I thought you were talking about the artifacts for a second there. Oh, no, 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 no. That we're referring to the human, the dirty, filthy human. Right. Yeah, they, they kind of reveal that. Uh, no, they, it was always their plan to eliminate McKee once uh, she wasn't useful anymore, which... Very typical prophet stuff, <laughs> like covenant leadership stuff. That's very, very typical of them. And that brings us to the next scene, which is very funny that you said that, Connor, because Cortana locates the covenant activity on the target world, but her scanning range is limited to the surface. So Silver Team leaps into action. Of course, they, they're walking through the ship. They're going to deploy to the surface or kind of like a mountaintop. And right before they're getting off, they're kind of grabbing their stuff and they're talking about what they're going to do. And uh, it's funny you said that earlier because Vanek makes oh. a really funny uh, kind of 
tidbit ta- uh, thing just about like we're gonna get the we're only it's a rescue mission just for the uh, artifact, right? And then Kai walks by and is like, he's talking about McKee, and he's like, I know, thank you. And it was really, <laughs> like, it was really, it was really funny. Uh, but yeah, so then they put their helmets on and they just like jump off the condor, which is really freaking cool. And they don't have parachutes, of course. I just that boggled my mind. I thought that was really freaking cool. And there's yeah. like a um a grunt, just kind of sleeping and they all they're landing in front of grunts basically so there you go Jaden you should be happy they <laughs> jump in front of this grunt and instantly don't tell me what to do yeah all right all right <laughs> chief instantly kills this grunt and is like says something some phrase or whatever like nighty night or something like that and then Kai shoots another grunt and says nobody will remember you they say these like really goofy <laughs> lines and Ver- uh, vanik kills kills one by st- uh, like stepping on the respirator that they wear and uh-huh. it was really cool because he picks up the neither and he goes oh yeah come to pot like it, it, it was it's a lot of nice <laughs> fun references and just goofy yeah. shit and so yeah. meanwhile back on reach we kind of see that halsey has collapsed into that was a terrible segue, sorry. So it was a really fun little segment of them kind of getting their weapons and getting ready. And then while that's happening, we cut back to Halsey, who all of a sudden on Reach has collapsed into a seemingly fatal fit of seizures. What's going on, guys? Oh, no. It's crazy. Oh, oh no. no. Miranda runs in. Halsey's like dying. And Miranda's like, wait a minute, and remembers what Halsey said, because she was in that meeting, remembers what Halsey said about the clones, about the Spartan clones, Mm -hmm. the kids, and realizes, oh shit, this is a clone, and starts getting in the face of this Halsey clone, and is screaming, where is she, where is she, where is she, the clone dies, and then Parangoski grabs her, and is like, let them take care of your mother, which was a kind of, (laughs) like, very awkward and weird way of saying, you know, this this person who's put supposed to be put to death is dying, but let's help them. It was it was weird. But let's take care of your mother so that I can kill her myself. Yeah, it was it was weird. <laughs> but it was it was pre- still it was a pretty crazy scene because Miranda figured it out pretty quickly. Yeah, it was a shocking twist reveal that I that was pretty pretty happy with. That was cool. Yeah, and we we kind of go back to Roskotska where Silver Team, you know, they've they've taken out some sentries and they're, you know, stealthily approaching the temple. And they, they kind of witness the prophets and McKee begin their ritual by combining the artifacts. And uh, the the artifacts conjoining with each other sets off this shockwave of energy that uh, stuns John briefly. And unfortunately, this leads to the Spartans being discovered. And, uh, you know, the prophets immediately unleash, you know, a small army of elite zealots who swarm out from beneath the mountain that they're on. So within seconds, they are... The numbers quickly and overwhelmingly stack against them. Uh, John and Riz uh, kind of take take the lead, and they confront a squad of brutes in front of the temple. While Vanek and Kai watch their backs, and this is quickly becoming a very tense, very, very over the top action scene. And and John is fighting these brutes and just you know engaging them hand to hand, and on, you know he's fighting valiantly, but unfortunately he and Riz are both kind of knocked out of the fight, and you know it's looking really bad for them. But they are ironically rescued when McKee activates the joint artifacts, which releases an even greater wave of energy, which scatters the swarming Covenant forces and kind of buys the Spartans time to survive. Uh, also, while it's happening, the artifacts start projecting a massive holographic star map into the sky above the temple. And John gets to his feet and he tries to approach McKee, but... He collapses and he's sent into another vision of the halo, which is usually what happens when McKee is involved with the artifacts. And he kind of sees her there. He sees McKee on the ring world and she looks back at him and you know, he just, he asks her, send us back, send us back. We have to, uh, we have to end this. And you know, she, she refuses. She says, we belong here. There's a reason the keystones brought us together and it brought us all, all the way here. And she, she just asks him, stay with me, John. Like, she just wants to stay on the halo with him. And, you know, Vanek and Kai, you know, they've, at this point, they've fallen back into the temple, and they're getting just overrun. They're, you know, taking, taking heavy fire, and they, they need Chief back in the fight, but John won't wake up. Uh, and so they're, they're getting desperate. And we go back to the vision, 
John is still trying to talk McKee into deactivating the artifacts when he sees that blood has appeared on her chest and the vision of the halo starts to fade away. And all of a sudden, John wakes up and he realizes that Maki's been shot. Yeah. He realizes that Kai had to, like, he, she, was, she had to figure out a way to wake John up. The only way she could think of was to shoot the person who was making the star's star map appear. Mm-hmm. And when Maki falls, she's, she's gone. She's dead. Yeah. So, you know, take that, people who didn't like her after episode <laughs> one. Take that, me. <laughs> uh, and in that moment, the star map just disappears. You know, the prophets are like, oh, shit. It wasn't done yet. We don't know where Halo is. Yeah, we, have, we still don't know where Halo is. Yeah, they're upset about that. We still don't know what GameStop to go to buy the perfect copy. Oh, <laughs> when is the midnight release? Yeah. <laughs> you know, while this is happening, uh, Riz, Kai, and Vanek are all just, they, they like, one by one, they all fall. I think Riz goes for, or I think Vanek goes first, followed quickly by Riz and Kai. Yeah, Vanek gets shot. They're just, they're just getting swarmed, man. Uh, and Cortana says, we are running out of options and there's no way that we can save the artifacts and the team. You know, he can't touch the, the keystone without succumbing to the power. Mm-hmm. So John's like, hey, I got an idea. How about we do that thing you said you didn't want to do where you take <laughs> over my body and control it like a meat puppet. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, wait, but if I do that, uh, you're, there's no way we know that you're going to be able to come back. I, you know, this could kill you. And he's like, hey, I trust you. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, in, that was insane. I love and he it. says that while walking towards the brute chieftain we saw in episode five. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, I don't, I, by the end of the episode, I find out, we find out, I don't think that's Atriox. So actually, actually, the subtitles Ooh. supposedly say Atriox growls because. I, d- yeah, yeah, I do remember Ooh, that. Oh, I didn't yeah. watch it with subtitles. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, so as John is walking out into everybody firing at him he kind of like sacrifices himself and tw- he's, he's like shooting some people and stuff and the last shot he has basically is of atriox in the face shoots yeah. him like in the yeah. cheek or whatever and he growls and it the subtitles are like atriox growls and i thought that was pretty fucking cool um yeah. i did notice the lip looked a little similar to atriox's yeah. like scar that he has yeah. in infinite so i was like maybe but then well, I guess we're we're talking spoilers. That that uh, the pelican comes out and shoots shoots yes, him. So yeah. I was like, maybe he's just gone. So so I yeah. think it's gonna start. Yeah, we don't know. So basically, what happens is John walks out. He gets his shit rocked by Atriox. Mm-hmm. Atriox just slams him with a brute hammer or a gravity hammer, and he goes flying. He lands and basically dies. You you hear him flatline. Everybody's kind of like, oh shit. Cortana approaches him uh, from her little weird holographic self and kind of reluctantly places her hand on his chest and surges into his armor system and then all of a sudden just revives John's body. And you see the... uh, You see the HUD. It kind of looks different. It's all Cortana-y, if that makes any sense. And Cortana Mm -hmm. says, when the game is over the king and the pawn go back into the same box which is a pretty good quote i'm not gonna lie that was that was very good yeah and so the new master chief stands up and literally just wipes the map clears the area of covenant resistance in this crazy methodical brutally efficient like way like just grabs two plasma pistols and just like puts puts their arms out and just goes do, 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 and like every shot hits and it's like a headshot and it's yeah. a perfect shot which if everyone watching this anybody who's ever played the game is like please i wish the puzzle pistol was that strong god give me that please she basically turned on aimbot for for pretty Chief. much pretty <laughs> much takes out like two like takes out a an elite and i think a grunt at the same time with a sword like with their own weapons and then yeah. pulls them apart and then is about to go out into everything and fight, I guess, Atriox and just stands there and stares at Atriox and Atriox is kind of, I, I'm going to say Atriox because that's just who apparently it is, walks up and then all of a sudden a condor just shows up out of nowhere and just starts shooting, you know, just takes out the brute Atriox and 
destroys everything, just starts slaughtering everybody, and we see that it is Cortana also controlling the Condor. So mm-hmm. the Condor lands, provides this air support, lands, Vanek and Kai kind of rally their strength and help Riz towards their escape route while Chief just retrieves the artifact and walks up and Kai's like, Chief, no, and just picks it up. And then you kind of like get this weird sound where a lot of the sound just disappears and you just mostly hear Chief's armor walking, which I thought was a really cool effect. And then you just see Kai's face like they do the Iron Man thing and you see Kai like, what the fuck? And there's nothing, nothing happens. There's no, there's no effect of anything with the artifact and they just get on the ship and they bounce. Yeah. I, I did think it was really funny that the, the hierarchs were still floating there. Watching yeah. this happen, I was like, no one thought to take a pot shot at them. Honestly, I really would have loved it if, if he had just like taken th- like three shots at them and like it hit their, you know, because they all have shields. Yeah, I would have just like Bing, 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 and then like oh, like have them scared a little bit. Did you notice that they were color coded? I did notice that. Yeah, yeah that was kind of yeah, cool. That was pretty cool. Oh, I didn't yeah, see that. I also Red, I also noticed green. that they they put a lot of money into the the hierarchs. Oh yeah, yeah. Like they look awesome. They look really good. Yeah, yeah. Which I think that you know it's like it's like they look so good, but then there's other shots that just don't look nearly as good like i was i almost thought they were practical those heads yeah so luckily since john is unaffected by the by the artifacts since cortana is in control of him they manage to make a clean escape like they they take off into the air and start flying toward home in their condor uh but unfortunately they have to deal with the with the riz problem riz is uh grievously wounded she apparently i i remember seeing her get stuck with a plasma grenade and it went off like on her torso which as we all know from the games that's pretty much an instant instantly fatal wound like you don't survive that and riz is just clinging to life and fading fast this is graphic so this was like really graphic. yes this was a little hard to watch yeah it got it got pretty gruesome vanek and kai are trying to stabilize riz uh but a, a chief you know sees a solution and he it just rips off her chest plate, you know, just, you know, rips part of her armor off and then uses like a makeshift welding torch that he salvaged from one of the components in the, in the condor and just cauterizes Riz's wound and prevents her from bleeding out. But the, uh, the process is excruciatingly painful scream. Uh, judging by, yeah, the scream that Riz lets out. It's just, TV loves the old cauterize the wound shot. Yeah, that's it's it's a classic for a reason. It, it has a lot of impact to it. An oldie but a grossie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Uh, but it looks like Riz will pull through it, it, for the time being, at least. And so, Silver Team is battered, uh, beaten to shit, but they are relatively intact and heading home. Yep. And this is where we get the nice little uh, wrap up monologue from uh, the real Halsey, <laughs> the real one. Yeah. The one who's not dead, which then that's going to be a very interesting conversation of uh, where where or when did she swap? Because, you know, she could have been this fake clone Halsey the entire time, like the entire season. I'm pretty sure it had to do with some... Well, I'm pretty sure... I'm thinking it, I think it was when she got in the escape pod. I'm, yeah, that's what I thought. Probably, probably around that spot there. Yeah. Aiden mentioning the package was probably him referring to the clone. The clone, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so probably around then. But yeah, it's it's a little ambiguous, but... Uh, she, she, so she's sitting there, like, I, you know, uh, we, we wrote down in the script, like, the script, like, she's trying to blend in, but, like, she's just sitting on a park bench, <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. like, writing in a, writing in a book, like, very, like, hiding in plain sight, you know, and she, uh, she talks about, uh, the, you know, humanity needs to, but I don't think they have the ability to survive what comes next, mm-hmm. you know, she wants humanity to take control of its own evolution, and she's like, she's being like, hey, you know, I did the, you know, I'm doing the right thing. She still believes that she's, like most megalomaniacs, she thinks that she's right. Right. No remorse for anything. And she goes, you know, at the very end, she's like, we need to, we need to achieve transcendence, which is a very interesting way to put it, because that's exactly what the Covenant want to do. Mm-hmm. They want mm-hmm. to transcend. And that's yeah. why she says, I suspect the Halo will provide the key. Yeah. But uh, she's still wanted. Like, we see, we even see like a little wanted poster of her. So I guess Miranda's. Uh, Miranda was able to convince Parangoski that she's still alive. Yeah, I she guess fooled so. nobody with that little clone switcheroo. Interesting. Yeah, it was a very strange line too to hear because is Halsey kind? Of, it kind of just shows that McKee was 
almost right. Like there's no difference between the covenant and humans. There are parallels. Yeah, there are a sure. lot of parallels. Yeah. We're not so different, you and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for the last scene in this season one, we get back to the Condor, and Kai approaches Chief and just sits down in the chair, and it, it moves up, and he hasn't said a word. And she just kind of turns and asks and says, John, is that you? And Chief turns his head to look at her and doesn't respond. And it kind of ends like Halo 1 where you just see Chief's helmet. Yeah. And then that is basically it. Yeah. Except it stays on this time. That's, that's another <laughs> Yeah. No, he takes off his helmet, revealing a smaller helmet underneath. <laughs> And that is episode nine, Transcendence, the season one finale for Halo on Paramount+. Plus. All right, so now we get to do my favorite part, which is dissect what we thought about the episode. But before we do that, let's uh, take a break and get a word from our sponsors. Okay, now that we've heard from our sponsors, it's time to hear what Connor thought about the episode. Followed by Kevin, and finally me, to bring us all down to a sad level. <laughs> so, Connor, uh, please, tell me, how did you feel about sure. the show? As the, as the most positive voice on this recap podcast, how did you feel? Yeah, you know, that has been my track record so far. Uh, I've been kind of the most... I, I guess, I, I feel like I've just tried to be charitable to the show, and I think in return I've been pleasantly surprised with most of the episodes, um, but with this you one... Cash in Paramount's checks to be nice? Is that what you've been doing? Are we sponsored uh, by them? Listen, I'm not. I, it's an NDA. I can't. I can say. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Sorry, I, I shouldn't I have brought it up. I can literally say no more about it. It's an interesting dynamic to only bribe one of us to speak positively. The other two, they didn't bribe. <laughs> you got to remember, <laughs> they bribe one. They're like, that's all we need. You got to remember, uh, Jaden Connor's going to be guilty spark in the next season. You got to remember that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. They they ex- exclusive rights. You guys need to keep a lid on it. You're fucking with my bag right now. Uh, <laughs> Listen, they didn't pay me, so they're going to pay for it. <laughs> but no, like, for, particularly in this episode, I I was very pleased. I just think this was a great finale, and I was really happy with it. Uh, you know, it, it capped off, uh, like I said, I think, I think at the beginning I said that uh, there were character arcs I noticed throughout the season that were capped off pretty well here. Um, and it was just a really strong bookend to the first season. Uh, you know, it, th- this wasn't a perfect final episode, but it was a very strong note to end on. Specifically for some of these character arcs, I really enjoyed kind of watching come to a close or at least to a uh, temporary conclusion. I just think that uh, Captain Keys was kind of a sleeper character uh, this, this season. Because, Jaden, I remember you and I were on the same page in, in episode one. We were not really all that happy with how Keys was being characterized in the show we're like who's this guy is this some kind of sad sack middle manager dude like mm-hmm. what's his deal uh but i think he really realized the season arc in this episode by facing down the demons he's been repressing all like for most of his career and he's finally owning up to what he's been responsible for and he's you know kind of dealing with the consequences of that like he's stuck up he's stuck up for himself and faced the music at the beginning of this episode by admitting what he did to the spartans and uh, just kind of showing the spine that I think we th- that we both maybe felt were missing that was missing early on. So um, that's that's just genuine growth that I saw from uh, from Captain Keys, which was very cool. Um, and there's there's consequences. I think good character growth should have consequences, and you know that comes in the form of Miranda kind of distancing herself from her father. That relationship is uh, strained to say the least now, and. And we mentioned uh, Cortana and John's relationship. I, you know, we can argue about like, it wasn't done perfectly, but I, I did see some pretty big payoff in terms of that relationship here. Like when Cortana was first introduced, I think in season th- uh, episode three, I mean, John didn't trust her from the get go, like just wasn't really happy to have her around. Mm-hmm. But at the end of this episode, he, he shows her essentially the ultimate form of trust uh, for the sake of completing the mission. he, Sac- he lays his life on the line. He puts his life, his existence, in her hands. Like you can't trust a person more than that. So, the the growth between them was, you could say it's, you could say it, you know, wasn't given the time it needed. But I still enjoyed watching it kind of come to this level 
to this point. We'll get to that. In, tr- in Transcendence. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get there. We'll, I'll let you tee off on that. But, but no, I, I still enjoyed watching it. Um, and, you know, some stray thoughts, you know, just the action scenes in this episode were great, really fun, really uh, just, just energetic and, and awesome and cool to watch. Some of the animations were a little iffy. Mm-hmm. You know, the CGI in this, in this season in general has been kind of all over the place. It's, but... it's so weird because there'll be shots where it's literally shot to shot. Like, like when, when Chief is fighting those, those brutes in this latest episode, yeah. I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then it cut to the first person. I was like, oh, God, what's happening? Why does yeah. this look so bad? Yeah. I, it didn't really take, take me out of it, but it was noticeable. But yeah, it still it did the job. I will say McKee's death um, made sense for the story. Like, I could see what it, why it was called for in the story, but... I couldn't shake the feeling that it was it was a little bit anticlimactic. Like it just kind of it felt rushed, in my opinion. It did feel it, rushed. It felt a little out of nowhere. Yeah, a little rushed. A little out of nowhere. I, I, again, it made sense. I think the scene was done well. Like you know, obviously Charlie Murphy's been a phenomenal actress on this show, and I think she did McKee's ending. You know, all the justice it deserves. I, so. I will not smack talk any of these actors because they all did a phenomenal oh, job. Yeah. Like, sure, sure. Please do not think that we think these actors are not good in any way because they are all fantastic. Absolutely. They are working Absolutely. with what they have. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, you know, again, it was like one of those things like, yeah, maybe that that character's ending could have been, you know, could have been fleshed out more. But, you know, just I think they they did a decent job of kind of letting her play her part out as a tragic character. You know, she she deserved better. Like, I just feel bad for what all that happened to McKee. Like she's very much a tragic character who was just used by so many people. Uh, you know, I guess most of all the prophets, but you know, humanity never really did her many favors either. So felt bad for her. Yeah. She never got to leave that being a kid thing, you know, like she was always the scared little kid. And that that's too. How it felt when she went back to the prophets and was like, but there's a place for me, right? Like it felt, it felt like that little kid, you know, yeah. talking. Will you the- be my mommy? Of course we will little one. And it felt really sad. And so when they got back, you know, when they shot, I got shot, it it was, I will say, I agree. I think it was rushed, but I also think it was, it was still kind of sad. It was impactful. Can can we take a moment to all celebrate the fact that she's not the arbiter? Thank (laughs) fucking God. We, we can be grateful for that. Yes. Uh, That's fair. Yeah. I'll also just throw out there one last thing. Um, Halsey's escape. uh, That twist was, I thought it was brilliant. I was like, an unexpected little, you know, reveal that I think was pulled off wonderfully. Uh, and what what I like most about that is like that twist excels exactly how underhanded and deviously intelligent Catherine Halsey is. Like, I think that was a good moment for her character to really shine as this mastermind, basically, who can who can get away with almost anything. And uh, she's very resourceful, very scrappy, and. Uh, very determined. So that was that was good characterization, good writing. And that was just that was just fun to watch. Uh, it was fun to watch Miranda kind of realize and you know catch on to it. That was cool. Uh, but yeah, long story short, I was psyched for this finale. It was fun to watch, and I'm just really looking forward to season two. I you know I'm sold now. I will watch season two, no hesitation. I mean, I'll have reservations going into it. I'm, I know it won't be perfect, but uh, no, I'm I'm looking forward to more. Uh, Kevin, what about you? What what do you think of uh, the finale? So I really liked it. I actually think it might be one of the best episodes in the season. I think there's some factors as to the reasons why. Um, I liked a lot of the action sequences. I thought they were done fairly well, aside from CGI issues. I enjoyed the beginning part where... John just kind of explains it to the Spartans, what's going on, and they kind of fight back on it and don't want to believe it, and then they kind of say, okay, fine. Um, I yeah. will say, there's Silver Team 2. Does that mean Silver Team 1 is destroyed? Does that mean that there's other Silver Teams out there? That, that got me thinking. I was just kind of sitting there thinking about that. Um, I would well, like... It, it's, we don't know how late it is in the war. Maybe this is like they... This, these are the Spartans they just like that were left from other teams. Oh. They formed it into Silver Team Two. Well, maybe. Wait a minute, sure we do. It, yeah, Reach maybe. is still around. We know where we're at. Reach is, is not been destroyed yet. The timeline is still different. True, it's true. still different. We don't really know. We don't know how bad the war is going. Which again, I think is a flaw yeah. in the show. But we'll I'll, I'll get to that in my review. Um, but yeah, I I thought 
Cortana, I think the budget, majority of the budget for CG went into Cortana for this episode, with good reason, yeah. with good reason. We had a lot of close-ups of Cortana. There were some weird things, like, you know, um, they didn't put Cortana where Chief was looking at when he was talking to her, like, in, that, in, the, in the lab, so it kind of looked a little funky at points, but I love, I, I will say some of the CG was really bad, like, seeing... Seeing um, Kai running, it was badass yeah. and it was cool, but it also looked odd because the animation itself, not the model, but the animation was way too animate-y. Yeah, they, they, I, I said in our, in our, uh, our pre, like, pre-meeting, I was like, I wanted to add Benny Hill music to when she was running because it was like <laughs> cartoonishly yeah. fast. Yeah, they, uh, there were just some things where... It threw me out a like, little bit. Like to give a great example, like uh, when in Captain America: Winter Soldier, like when he's lapping, uh, when when Steve Rogers is lapping Falcon, you know he's running at a fast pace. Yeah, but it's like a realistic fast pace. Correct, makes sense. Like makes it doesn't sense. like you know like you can you can get the feeling that he's running super fast, but it doesn't look like like his legs are made of jello and are just yeah. flopping along yeah. on the bottom of the ground. Yeah, there were also a couple story elements I really thought were interesting uh, that tied with cinematic elements like if you think about when maquis is on the ring it's kind of euphoric and imaginative and that mm-hmm. being kind of ties back to them still being that like scared little kid and this is their like comfort place this is where they go to escape and that's kind of how it felt when she was like we belong here no i'm we're not going back and don't you see no this is where we're supposed to be like it's their happy place if that makes sense I, yeah. I thought, I remember when uh, a couple episodes ago I said how I thought yeah, there was a lot of feathering and it looked kind of, I don't want to say heavenly, but it looked kind of, hap- you know, like cloudy, if that makes sense. Like it looked very mm-hmm. yeah Oh yeah, no, dreamy. It's, it's paradise. And I think that that's part of it. I think it makes sense now to me. Cinematically, it kind of makes sense. I think John doing his uh, killing himself thing was stupid. Didn't fit any narrative, in my opinion. Cortana has the ability to take over your body, whether you're dead or alive. Are you just scared it's going to hurt? I don't understand. I thought that just didn't make sense. I think maybe that was a case of she didn't want to, so he was forcing her hand. Yeah, kind of I, I, her yeah, I, I think it could have been articulated a little better. I agree with you, Connor. I think it, it wasn't clear. But yeah, I think I think yeah. if she had been like like you know, no, I won't do it. He'd be like, well, then I'll make you. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. It makes yeah. sense, but it just, I don't know, it just kind of felt kind of lame. But, it. yeah, overall, I had fun. Uh, the, again, there were some story elements that didn't hit me right where, you know, Perangoski being like, stop, what? let them take care of your mother. Like, come on, really? Um, Halsey's thing was really cool. I thought that was really great. Aiden finally getting their comeuppance felt great. And, of course, <sighs> at the hands of uh, my... MVP Spartan, who I, yeah, Kate Kennedy, got a crush on Kate Kennedy now. I will be 100% with you guys. <laughs> Hell yes. That was badass. Um, I think Kai also, I liked that it kind of focused on Kai a little bit in this episode more than normal. Like, yeah. she did a lot in this episode, and I liked that. I, I Kai is actually my favorite character, aside from Cortana, because everybody loves Cortana, but Kai, I think Kai is my favorite character. I would like to see more Spartans. I think it leaves yeah. the story open. Maybe we'll get some more. That'd be kind of cool. I'm afraid they're going to be setting up also like this weird Atriox rivalry rather than starting with Arbiter, Arbiter which is I'm fine with the brute stuff, but one thing at a time because we had the pacing problem with the yeah. whole season kind of like that. So can we just one, one thing at a time or maybe two and that's it. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought up pacing because that's all that's basically what my notes say in big, big red crayon (laughs) pacing, pacing, pacing. (laughs) My problem with this episode is kind of my problem with the season as a whole. Let me be clear. The the finale ended on a note. I think they ended it as best they could, given what they had. My problem with the show, and it's been my problem since episode one, is that I feel like the writers got in a room and said, what if what do we want to do with this show? And they wrote it down on a whiteboard, and then the lead producer said, 
You guys see all that stuff you wrote? We're going to do all of it in the same season. And they all went, yay! Because there was so much in here that, like, on its own would have been a great story if it had been given time to breathe and develop. Like, my biggest complaint, you know, my favorite part about Halo is watching Cortana and Chief's interactions. And I feel like this show was not about them doing that. I think this episode did a really good job, though. This episode did a fantastic job, Kevin, you're right. But that was what I felt was missing from the earlier episodes. You know, like, I would have loved to have seen Cortana, like, like learning with Chief and, like, growing with him. It kind of felt like, you know, he was just ignoring her until she was convenient to use this episode. Or, like, the previous episode. Well, you gotta remember, budgets. Hey, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get that, but also they said they spent, like, $12 million an episode. Gee, that's, that's a lot. It's like, it's like so, so at, at, that, at some point, that doesn't, that's not a good excuse anymore. Yeah, I agree. Buy me a house, Paramount. Come on. Well, Paramount was like, Paramount was like, we're, we're doubling, tripling down on this show. I mean, they announced season two before season one was even out, which I know we were talking earlier, like we weren't sure. I did go back and confirm that. So yeah. like they are, they are so. determined to make this show like their Game of Thrones. And mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm afraid that because they put that big expectation on this show, a lot of the things that could have been good got lost in the weeds. You know, like I, I, I liked Miranda's like, defiant like win over her mother in this like episode like in the interrogation room scene but like we didn't i don't think we got to see that nearly enough like their rivalry in there you know in the show like um kwan and the whole the whole story on madrigal that feels tacked on now because it wasn't in the last two episodes of the show Mm -hmm. you know it was like it was like they didn't have enough story to carry it all the way to the end so they just wrapped it up in episode seven yeah i i see what you mean i just like you know we have the we have the we have the, you know, the, the badass warrior getting paired up with the rookie in Chief and Cortana. We have Kai learning how to become a real boy, but also, so is Chief becoming a real boy. You know, then we have the, the, the we have like a chosen one arc for Quan. We also have the, you know, the space pirate who's learning to be, have a heart of gold. There's so much that they wanted to do with this show. I feel like none of it made as big of an impact as it could. And that's my issue with like the rap, the way that this season wrap or this episode wrapped up. I definitely finished the season. Like that last scene when it just ended with his, the cut of his helmet, I'm like, really? And then I got like annoyed cause I wanted more. Like it made me want more. And I was like, God, <laughs> Can't you just do ten episodes? Why can't I do nine, man? Like <laughs> that's called me... a cliffhanger. Yeah, I know, but it was like one of those cliffhangers where I was like, it wasn't like a great cliffhanger where I was just like, you know, oh my god, the wall just got knocked down. I need to, do, I need got to see more of this Game of Thrones. But like, no, it was. Yeah. I see his helmet, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you? Yeah, I was kidding kind of like, me? What, I was like, so what are we doing here? And the thing is, what do you he's mean? like stoic and quiet and stuff, and I'm like. Is it him? Is he brain damaged? Is that like just Cortana? Is it like what is it? And I was like, ah! It, it made me frustrated and wanting more, not Wait. because I loved it, but because I'm like, damn it, I need to know. <laughs> so I think that that worked for me at least. And and again, I'm not gonna say this is exactly like the games. Like this episode felt a lot like the games. I think they would have done better with this episode if they got rid of the Iron Man like close up kind of shot where like they show the inside of the helmet. I think if they had just kept it Power Ranger style and they had just like had voiceovers on- over it, one, you would have saved on budget because yeah. you wouldn't have had to do a close up shot and you could have just done some little, you know, remote voiceovers or whatever. <clears throat> Hashtag love remote voiceover work. But I also think that it would have cinematically been better. I think that kind of took me out at points. Um, I think the first person shot of John looking at the Keystone stuff and his helmet getting cracked was cool. Did I need to see his face? No. Yeah. I, it was, it worked, but it didn't, I, I think those were like some of the bigger combat gripes I have. Again, the story for this episode, I didn't think the pacing was too bad. I do think. The way and speed McKee died was a little odd and quick. Oh, yeah, that was, again, that goes back to me talking about, like, them picking up and dropping threads so easily. I was like, all right, you know, you're committing to having this McKee character exist and be there. And then it feels like they kind of tossed her away. 
And that's the thing. I think it was it was left kind of ambiguous too. Like the Atriox thing, like we don't know. We just see the hammer and we see him go flying. We don't know if he's dead. We don't know what they're gonna do with Maki's body. You know, like they, I think it left a lot more open questions than just John, is that you? Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're left with a lot of questions. Uh, we're left with uh, we're we're left on a cliffhanger, as you know, as per usual. And that's that's you know, pretty standard TV writing. Uh, you know, leave you wanting more. So you know, there, there were things wrapped up. There were things you could argue were kind of dropped, and there were things kind of left hanging. Uh, there's a there's a mix of uh, conclusion and speculation to be had. One thing we can all agree: there was definitely an ending. <laughs> Correct, and there was no Johnson. Oh yeah, Johnson Watch has ended. Season one, disappointing. Still no Johnson Watch. Or still, still no yeah. Johnson. Not even an end credit scene of him chomping on a cigar. Yeah, we got grunts, but no Johnson. We'll we'll be at, we'll still be waiting for that. Which means that I'm excited to announce uh, Johnson Watch season two. Hey, <laughs> we're spinning off uh, to have our own show. It's called Johnson Watch. It's where I talk about all shows that don't have Sergeant Johnson in them. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please take a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps us grow the show. And be sure to connect with us on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter at lore underscore partner. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you guys next time.